Hey everybody, my name is Mike at Filmboy24 and today I'm going to do something and show you the results, something that I've never ever done in my life. Morse G3 processing tank maiden voyage. That's right. Although I've owned, over the last 25 years, I've actually owned three or four of these Morse G3 type processing tanks, but I've never ever used one. I've always sort of been intimidated by them or a little nervous about them and uh, I never actually used one. So after, uh, you know, a little back and forth with my uh, uh, friend scriber there, Ted, uh, he said, you really should give it a shot. He gets consistent results with it. So I picked up, bleh, Picked one up on eBay, really cheap, like cheap, uh, and it's in really good condition. And all I did was replace the little foam seal around the edge of the little window here, just so we don't get light leaks, and gave it a test run. Now, to give it a test run, what I did was I busted out my favorite 16 millimeter camera. I have several videos on this. And I hooked up my George Jensen 24 frames per second, whoa, crystal sync motor. I loaded it up with this old roll of 7278 Tri-X. And I just shot garbage. Yeah, on garbage. I just, I put the camera right there where my, uh, where my M50 is right now. And just let it run. And I babbled a lot. I had this little lapel mic on and my Tascam recorder going. So I know you can hear the sound of the camera kind of in the audio, but at any rate, I just wanted to see if I could get any results at all from my maiden voyage with the Morse G3 tank. Now I've heard mixed reviews on these. I've used the Lomo type sort of spiral tanks for several years and I've gotten mixed results, mostly decent, but I've also heard good and bad about these G3 tanks. Now this particular one will only process 16 and 35 millimeter film or double eight. It won't do super eight unless you modify it, which I did see a modification online. Anyway, I wasn't that interested in doing super eight in this tank anyway, as it is really meant for a hundred foot rolls or less. So to try to get more consistent results, essentially with black and white negative film, which is what I process. I know this is reversal, but I process it as a negative. Uh, I decided to give it a shot. Now, let me clear this off really quick. Hold on. Like that. And what I did was I shot a roll of Tri-X film, looked a manual up online for this bad boy, and took it in that bathroom right there that doubles as a dark room, and I loaded it up. Now, I'm not going to go through the process that I used for this, as far as actually, I didn't, in other words, I didn't shoot any video of me using the tank. If you're interested in seeing how I load and how I use this tank, there are some videos out there already. But if you wanna see my process, let me know and I'll probably make a video on using the tank. For now, I just wanted to see if I could get actual usable results out of it. So what I did, it comes with these two metal reels, or rollers or whatever you call them, I guess they're reels really heavy duty. I mean, they made things really well back in the olden days. Uh, so I, you, you basically, you take the film right out of the camera and it's on the 100 foot daylight spool. And in the dark, obviously, you thread it onto, or you just push it onto this, lock it in place so the film doesn't pull out. Now this is set for 35. You simply twist it, kind of like the Patterson tank reels do. Now it's set for 16. It's easier to load, I noticed, if it's set at 35 first. It's easier to get the film in here, in that little slot. Once you get it in, you lock it down. Then you can move this down to 16, as long as you keep it on the uh, flat side down here. And then you close, you push this down, you put your 100 foot daylight spool in there. Boom, close it up, and you spool it onto the Morse reel. Once you have that, you take this out and you take the other end, you clip it into this one, you put them both in the tank, close it up, take it into that developing room kitchen and process your film. Now, here's what I did. I, I didn't have a clue how to use this. As far as, the, you know, black and white films are fairly consistent and there's a lot more leeway when it comes to processing black and white film 
than there is when it comes to color film, uh, as far as your tines and your temperatures. So I essentially just guessed at what I thought might be close. I did see a video, I don't remember who posted, I saw a video a couple weeks ago where a guy said he did 14 turns, so one, or 14 cycles from one side to the other. So he would cycle 100 feet over here, then the second cycle would be bringing it back. Now he was doing reversal film, I'm doing negative film, but I thought maybe that might be kind of close because with Tri-X I usually go anywhere from five to eight minutes depending on how old it is or what type of Tri-X it is. So with this I decided I would do 14 turns. Now I did a couple of practices and it took me at a steady pace about a minute and a quarter to go from one side to the other, give or take a little bit depending on how tired I got. So what I did was I cooled my chemicals. I used HC-110B fresh, one liter, and I cooled it down to 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, use a funnel, I can tell you, if you're gonna use the top of this, which you have to, unless you do it in the dark and take the lid off. I use a funnel, I kind of tilted it a little bit because if you try to pour in here, it's gonna spill everywhere unless you're really careful and then it takes forever. So I used a little funnel and I poured it in there. It took about 15 seconds to get all the chemicals in, which is fine. So I did 14 cycles. That came up to just under 17 minutes. Now I'll tell you, it's very labor intensive. If you've ever used a Morse tank, strong arms, strong wrists. Something I don't have either of. <laughs> so so you, you do a lot of cycles. And to me, a cycle is taking 100 foot from one side to the other side. And I did just like this all the way. As soon as it stopped, I instantly started the other side. And again, just under 17 minutes. Drained it, boom, filled it with water. I did four cycles with plain, uh, plain water. And I think I did that twice. Uh, two cycles, drained the water, filled it with water again, two more, just to make sure because you're really only running a small portion of film through the chemicals or water for a brief amount of time. So I wanted to make sure I got a decent wash. And then I fixed it for close to what I did with the processor, only this time I did 12 cycles. So we're in the 15 minute range. Then I washed it with just plain water and I think I did, I have it all written down somewhere. I probably should have had notes up somewhere, but, and I believe I did 14 more cycles of final rinse. Then I drained the tank, filled it with uh, distilled water, uh, plugged it up, of course, filled it with distilled water, added a few drops of photo flow, really agitate it. You can take the top off at this point, really agitate the reels up and down, back and forth, get the water kind of sudsy, and then close it up and I did four cycles in the photo flow. One, two, three, four. At that point, I took the reel off and then I, by hand, squeegeed it and onto a 100 foot, regular 100 foot reel. Hung it up to dry and got some images. Here's what I'll say. I shot it with my Aeroflex at 24 frames per second, crystal. You can hear the camera if you listen. It's a loud, very loud camera. It's not meant for sync work or sync sound work unless you blimp it really well. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's one of the other, either a little underexposed. Uh, it's difficult in my little office here for me to light it properly. I use just 100 watt lights. I have seven of them. Uh, I didn't bring in, I have some 1K soft boxes. I didn't worry about bringing those in. So I used the 16 millimeter F2 lens on my Aeroflex, this one here. All right, see it? Can you see it? I uh, used that, I metered it with my little Minolta meter and it gave me F2 at ISO 160. So that lens only stops down to F2, uh, so I kept it there. I either underexposed a little bit or overdeveloped. I, I, I'm not positive, but it's a little contrasty. One more thing. This is the strangest thing I've ever seen. It's not my scanner, because I scan the film two or three times trying to work it out. Don't think it's the developing, because it would make no sense whatsoever. Has to do with the lens, I believe. But I'm gonna show you the film in just a second. 
and you'll see that two thirds or three quarters ish, uh, you know, into the film, the focus just starts going out. So everything is focused fairly well. Now I do everything myself. Everything was sort of focused fine. And then, like I say, it just starts going out of focus. I don't know if it's focusing too far in or too far back. I can't really tell. But by the end of the, whatever, two and a half minutes of film, it's just completely out of focus for some reason. Now, my only, only guess would be that the camera is very loud. It's a little, these Aeroflex S's are clunky. Um, and I ran it steady for three minutes. And I don't know, I know the f-stop ring is extremely loose on that particular lens. The focus ring isn't really loose at all, so I don't know if the f-stop ring starts vibrating a little bit, but that shouldn't change the focus. So I don't know, I don't know if the, the focus ring got vibrated a little bit. I didn't touch the camera at any point during any of this, so I'll let you be the judge. If you have any idea of what you think might have happened with my focus, by all means, please let me know. This is a pin registered camera and I'm overly impressed with how steady, rock steady, the image stays, as you'll see in one second. And lastly, I did absolutely nothing to the audio to do, I, I simply lined up the front slate, the tail slate lined up perfectly on its own. I didn't have to compress or expand the audio or video or anything. I love this George Jensen motor. It stays in absolutely perfect, perfect sync, as you'll see in one second. And without more of this, tell me what you think of my very first try at Morse G3 processing. Let's slate it. Like Mike just told you, I'm experimenting. This is the actual film I'm shooting. And this is my G3 tank. Now, I picked this old military-style case up at a flea market, but it houses my G3 quite nicely. Let me move it out of the way. There's my task cam. Uh, so, this is it. Now, like I said earlier, I've never used one of these in my life. So, the film that you're watching right now was processed in this actual G3 tank. Now... I'm just gonna take a peek at it. Woo! 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter film. I hope you actually are watching the film now. I guess you are, ish, maybe. It's not processed yet, I'm still filming it. So I hope it comes out. Um, I have a timer going here and I messed up the first time. I didn't actually have the recorder plugged in or anything. So I'm only gonna get a couple minutes worth of film. And the camera's really loud, so you're probably gonna hear the camera as well. And I'm not even positive how well it's focused because I'm a one-man band. I do all this stuff myself, which is how I like to do things. Right now, I'm just kinda of talking. This is really uh, a fun experiment. It's gonna be probably labor-intensive. We've been rolling for about a minute and a half, and I only had about two minutes of film left. So pretty much any-ish minute we're gonna be done, or any second. Uh, I'm really excited to try this. I really hope it turned out well. You know now whether it did or not. Again, I've had two or three of these in the past, maybe four, in the past 25 years, but I've never actually used one, and they just seem so fun. You could probably hear the camera. Did I already say that? The Aeroflex 16 millimeter S model cameras are really loud. I do have my George Jensen 24 frames per second motor on it. They're still very loud. Just for fun, I'm gonna mark the, the end here. We should do it upside down. Not too bad, right? I mean, my first try, I'm happy with it. You know, it's not perfect, but I'm content. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, give me your thoughts. Do me a huge favor if you haven't already. Subscribe if you like content like this. I would appreciate it. I did use my brand new batteries that I built for my Aeroflex S. If you're interested in learning how I built three, actually four, brand new eight volt battery packs for my Aero S, I'll put a link to it up here somewhere. You can take a peek. One other thing I wanna mention, I did receive another roll of 16 millimeter magazine film from my buddy and subscriber, Ivan in California. 
Ivan, I do have it. This is going to be a found film as long as it's not Kodachrome inside here. I, I haven't tested it yet. Uh, it's a very old mag. It's fully exposed. He believes it might be a military uh, something or other. We don't know. He, he doesn't know what it is. It's not something he or his family shot. It was in a camera, I believe. So look for this coming soon uh, as part of my found film. If you're not familiar with my found film, I like to take old carts of film like this or Super 8, not roll film, but carts uh, that people have forgotten about and that are going to end up in the landfill if they're not directed to me because I'll process it and scan it for free and show you the results on my channel. I think we're up to found film number 20 now. That's coming soon, I promise. Maybe next. Uh, in the meantime, if you like videos like this, I want you to do me a big favor and tap the like button. How about do me a favor and, you know, subscribe. See the picture here? Uh, it means a lot to me. I'm ecstatic at having over 1,300 subscribers at this point. That's 1,300 people that at least pretend to like what I do. If you like film-related stuff like this, consider becoming part of this little film boy family. It would mean a lot to me. It means a lot to this channel. It means a lot to my neighbor's mailman's next door's best friend's cousin. He told me so not that long ago. Okay? And until the very next time that I see each and every single one of you beautifully stunning, wonderful individuals, even though I really can't see you, Yep, mm-hmm. I'll see all of you on the very next go-around.